Hello, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube. This is Kentucky Koozie coming at you again with another video. I need to process all of this wood um, that's sitting on my back patio here. So today I'm going to start uh, just kind of bucking this up and getting it ready to split. This video is out of order. I actually did this before I did my last video about the uh, ski rope, but um, it doesn't really matter. I'm just telling you, if anybody's actually really paying attention and could, could know that, then uh, congratulations to you. More power to you. Thanks for watching. It's a, that's a true fan right there. I am using my home light right now to saw this wood and here's the issue I want to talk about and I want to hear from somebody in the comments if you have anything to say about this. So this is kind of a long story but um, again I would love to hear feedback from any saw experts out there. Um, I put fresh gas and oil into my steel chainsaw and it stopped running. Okay, and I'm not a complete idiot. I went to the gas station and I used the digital gas pump to measure 1.5 gallons of gas and I was supposed to put four ounces of oil in the gas. Well, and that's half of the rest, that's half of the recommended dose. It's supposed to be um, eight ounces of oil for um, three gallons of gas, but I only have a, I have a two gallon gas container, so I half the recipe and I put, I put 1.5 gallons of gas for four ounces of oil instead of eight ounces, okay? So I'm not a complete moron, I'm pretty sure I did the math correctly and I used the digital gas pump to measure it all. Well, I brought it home and I filled up my steel chainsaw and fired it up, thought it was fine, it was idling fine, and I walked around to the front of my house and I have a bush that is just growing out of control, so I cut it back with a chainsaw. I just, I just whacked it off at the ground, and um, when I was, I, that's, that's as much as I w was able to cut with it. I cut that little bush down, and I set the chainsaw down in the grass and started picking up all the sticks and everything, and it just shut off and stopped idling. And I didn't think much of it because chainsaws do that sometimes. If you move them sitting without revving them, they'll just shut off sometimes. Well, I walked around back and, and started to work on all this wood, and the saw wouldn't start. I mean, I cranked on it and cranked on it and cranked on it to the point that my shoulder was sore for a day, and it just would not start. So I was like, oh, something's wrong with the still, whatever. Uh, let me try the home light. And... I put gas in the home light saw, the same gas, and I ran it for about five minutes and it did the same thing and shut off and wouldn't start again. So coming up here in like two minutes, you'll see I set the home light saw down and it just shuts off and it won't start again. Um, so at that point in time, I pretty much figured that it had to be the gas that was doing this, right? Um, so I went and I got a funnel and um, because neither saw would now run, I mean I pretty much know it had to be this new gas and um, I get a funnel and I just dump the new gas back into the gas container and figured that I needed to add more oil to the mix. Um, actually I originally thought that I might have had too much oil. And, and this is where my confusion is. I don't want to get too far off track. I, I tried to add a little bit of uh, just pure gas to the gas tank and thought maybe the oil was too heavy and it was choking it out. Um, but that didn't work, so I ended up dumping the gas back out. And that's, that's where my thinking is kind of wrong, and I want to hear from people because I, I was just thinking, I was like, oh, well, I guess if the gas and oil mix is off, then the gas oil air mixture is, is off and the saws just won't run. But upon reading further about this issue, I don't think that's the case. Um, apparently, like chainsaws and, and, and equipment like this will run on pure gas alone for a short period of time and the oil provides lubrication for the engine, right? I mean, the, the pistons and rods moving. The oil is in there just to provide lubrication. So 
if you put straight gas in these things, they'll run, but they'll only run until friction builds up to the point where it seizes up the pistons and the, and the pistons can't move, and you score your pistons and and seize it, and your rings get all messed up, and they seize up, and, and the motor can't even turn over, right? That is what causes the motor to stop running and fail when the gas when you just run straight gas with no oil. Now I did have oil in it, obviously, so it shouldn't have been the case. So I cannot figure out why the saws wouldn't run. So here it just happened in the video; it just stopped, and you can see it's not starting again. But um, if anybody can shed any light on this, I would appreciate it because um, I cannot figure out why they wouldn't run at all when there was basically the recommended amount of oil in there. And I mean, there was still some oil in it and it, they wouldn't run at all for more than a couple minutes. Um, so now I'm wondering if my piston is, is scored up. And I, I haven't taken it apart yet to look and I'm probably going to have, this is, this is going to be one of those things that just bugs me until I just have to pull the muffler and or the spark plug off and look in there and see if I damaged it. But I mean, the bottom line is, is I emptied out the gas and oil mix, added another ounce or so of oil to the one and a half gallons, shook it up a little and refilled my saws and now they're running fine. My steel chainsaw appears to have great compression. I mean, I did a drop test with the holding it with the cord and it's just solid. I mean, it doesn't even fall at all. I mean, it has real good compression. It's running great, it's cutting great. I cut up that whole Osage orange tree in my previous video with it. Uh, it didn't really have any problems. It was smoking a little bit sometimes, a little bit of white smoke, but nothing, you know, over the top. So I can't figure out what went wrong if, if, Seizing is supposed to be what happens when you run those things with not enough oil. They basically seize and scar your pistons up. Um, if that thing's seized up, then it seriously damaged it. And the thing is, is it started right back up and ran. So I'm just like, okay, I'm just gonna go with it. I mean, I don't even. That's why I don't even know if I want to look in there. I'm gonna have to do it just out of curiosity. But I mean, looking at it isn't gonna do anything. I mean, if it runs and it's working, I'm not going to take it in and fix it or anything. It's not going to change anything by looking at it. It's just going to give me peace of mind and I'll look at it and go, okay, my pistons are fine or shoot, they're all scored up and, you know, scratched. I will say that the two cycle oil that I use is on the cheaper side of two cycle oils as far as they're concerned. It wasn't the manufacturer's still oil or a Husqvarna. And I don't really want to talk about the brand. I just, you know, because I don't want to give anybody problems. But I was wondering if maybe it's just a cheap oil and it's not providing good enough lubrication and it needs more than the recommended uh, dose of oil to really lubricate the machine properly. Um, that's all I can think of. Um, so maybe I need to go ahead and spend another dollar or two and get a decent oil. Um, but again, that still leaves me with wondering if my pistons are scored. Um, I hope I didn't seriously damage my chainsaw because, like I said, I mean, if you follow my explanation, if it stopped running because there wasn't enough oil, then it was doing it because the pistons couldn't move and it was seized, right? So it's damaged. And that's what's causing me a lot of frustration because I hate to think I damaged my saw using the recommended amount of oil in the gas. Um, but if you have any insight into that, let me know. And if I ever end up taking this thing apart and going ahead and getting my hands dirty and pulling this muffler off, I'll maybe let you know and I, maybe I'll do a video on it. I don't know if I'll be able to get a camera inside to see the piston or not because basically all I have is an iPhone. I don't really have a scope or anything to stick in there. But if I can find a flashlight on it and, and record it, I will certainly try to do that. Um, we'll see. I don't know if I'm going to do that or not, but if I do, I might try to record it. That was really 
really the main thing that I want to hear from about in this video. Um, it'll give a good chance for viewers like you to chime in and uh, give some interaction with the channel and help me to learn and uh, do better in the future and maybe help some other people. But um, if you're watching the video, I'm just bucking up these logs happily chainsawing along. And all of these logs, well, yeah, all of them actually, they came from just uh, the side of the road. And we had a big windstorm here um, a few weeks ago, and a lot of damage was done. I did a video on it, um, driving around looking. And um, all of these logs pretty much came from just the side of the road and from that windstorm. And people that needed them moved off their property, trees that fell down and were blocking the road and were just there for the taking or whatever. Um, so, I mean, when the getting was good, I went ahead and got a few truckloads of wood and I had, I mean, I even grabbed a little bit of pine just because I wanted to add it to my collection and it'll be just fine once it uh, seasons for a year or two. Might only need a year, but and I could put it in the fire pit or whatever and burn. But regardless, I added it to my collection. It smells great, especially when you split it. Just the whole area down there smells great. I got hickory and pine and a little bit of oak and you know what, all kinds of stuff. So it all smells great. But um, so that's where this stuff came from. I hope to keep the firewood content kind of rolling along, but usually this is a wintertime thing for me. When the leaves aren't on the trees, the sap's not flowing, um, that's when I make my wood. And you know, you get it now and, and let it season for the next season. And it's about done with the firewood gathering time for me. So it's kind of sad. Um, you know, there will probably be some events throughout the summer where I might be able to come across some wood. You never know if you're if you're always looking for wood. You never know what you'll come across, right? But um, if you are here for firewood content, uh, I commend you, and I hope you will stick around because I think I'm going to shift my content. I mean, um, once I'm done with making wood for this year, um, I'm going to have to do other things. So. Uh, please stick around, stick with me, and I mean, I'll do firewood, uh, you know, whenever I can, and certainly next year, but um, I'll probably do some fishing videos. I want to test that lure out I made in a short a while back, um, and other outdoor videos, and any other mechanic things that I come across and stuff. Uh, you know, whatever I can come up with, I'm going to shoot videos, you know, any wildlife photography or whatever, but... The content will be changing. Please stick with me. I hope you don't get offended if you're here for firewood and I go fishing or show a car mechanic video or something else. Um, I, I'm going to do whatever I can to get content and try to build my channel and I don't want to lose people because of changing content. Um, it's just hard to settle in on a niche and do one thing only. Um, you know, and this is just kind of my personal channel, and um, it has my name on it, but uh, my real original YouTube uh, website is youtube.com slash Kentucky Koozie. So if I was to make stickers or anything, I might make uh, Kentucky Koozie stickers. Let me know what y'all think about that. Because everybody seems to have, like, a name, you know? It's like, on the farm with, uh, you know, what's his name? <laughs> Joe Schmo. Or what, you know, and so not a lot of people use their real name. It'll be like, you know, Jeff from, you know, Firewood Burn, Burn Down Channel or whatever. So maybe I should just be Kentucky Koozie and be Kyle from Kentucky Koozie. Um, I might do that, and that's my uh, original website, so you can certainly find me by that. Um, my handle is my name, first and last name, Kyle Walling. And that's the story on that because I'm pretty sure YouTube has changed their policies on the way you can name channels now. Currently, uh, you can have a handle, which is a, it's youtube.com slash, and then at, the at symbol, uh, and then a handle. So it'd be slash at Kyle Walling. But if you have legacy status and your uh, site is old enough, 
it used to be a name. And my original name when I signed up 14 years ago or longer, whenever, um, was Kentucky Koozie. So that that name is not a handle. It is youtube.com slash Kentucky Koozie. You don't have to put an app symbol or anything. Just slash Kentucky Koozie. Um, but you can no longer do that. It's my understanding. Uh, you can't change your you can't change your name. Uh, you can't ever get back to it. They're they're going to honor the original legacy uh, names. But going forward, you have to have a handle and it has to have an at symbol in it. So the new channels, you all have to have at Kyle Walling. Um, and, and you know, you can actually change the handles, but you can't get back and change those old names. Um, it's just, I'm sure all you creators know that. Anybody else may not know that, but uh, that's how you can find YouTube channels if you're ever wondering. Right now, I'm noticing that my saw is smoking, and it does feel a little bit hot. I feel like it's working really hard. If you were, if you rewind or if you were looking, you can see some white smoke puffing out of my saw, and that was coming out of like right underneath of where the oiler would be. It was, it wasn't really coming out of the exhaust. It looked to me like it was coming out of like the bottom where the chain like exits out, like underneath the oiler and everything. It was. Uh, puffing smoke out of there so I thought I was out of bar and chain oil and if I remember correctly I wasn't I mean it was down low I mean it was like a third of a tank or less or whatever but I went ahead and shut it off and made sure I had plenty of uh, bar and chain oil in it um, and let it cool down a little bit but it was smoking and feeling hot so that's what's going on right now and I just kind of refilled that and give it a little break here, um, but it, it does fine. It just seemed like it was overheating a little bit. Yeah, man, if you were watching, you could see where the smoke was coming. It was coming out of the back of the saw, so, you know, I don't know. I just love running chainsaws. I love making firewood. I know a little bit about them. Look at that thing smoking. I don't know what's going on with it, though. And it gets the job done, and it still runs, so I'm just rolling with it. But, um, hey, I'm not a mechanic. I just love working with them, so you know somebody might be able to tell me uh, without being rude. Um, I don't use that saw very much, but um, it's just a smoker. Uh, I guess that oil that I put in the gas might just be cheap oil. Maybe I got bad oil or something. That's what it's looking like. Um, my still was smoking a little bit, not that bad, but I mean, if you go back and watch that video of the Osage Orange Tree, the last video I posted. Uh, pulling down the tree with a ski rope. Uh, it was smoking a little bit at times, but I mean, it was almost normal because when you rev it up, it was fine. I mean, nothing. I mean, if it was sitting there just blowing out white smoke constantly, like you were, you know, you know it was completely, the gas was completely messed up or something, I'd be worried. But I mean, a little puff of white smoke every now and then seemed normal. Now, with that being said, with all the problems that I had with this oil, I may just need to switch brands and use a different oil. Um, it seems like it's probably just a cheap oil. It's not providing adequate lubrication and it may not be burning clean. So I probably just need to go ahead and spend two more dollars and get some better oil. Wow, it's really smoking. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> 
<laughs> I guess that's the conclusion I'm going to come to, and that's probably the conclusion that most people will tell me in the comments, so thanks. Something else with this home light saw, I'll just go ahead and mention it. When it idles, it's idling really high. Uh, I may need to see if I can tune this thing and bring it down a little bit, but um, when it's at idle, the chain is just racing. I mean, it's not like the chain just kind of, kind of jerks along and uh, kind of pulls a little bit when it's idling. It is going like f fast. I mean, it, it'll cut, if. If you take it and lean it against the log, it'll cut into the wood before it stops. I mean, it races. And when you, I mean, it's like when you put the chain brake on, the chain is going so fast, I feel like it's unhealthy to just put the chain brake on and stop it going from as fast as it's going to zero instantly. Uh, I've just been dealing with it and, and getting by because I hardly use this saw at all. But that'd be something else maybe. Uh, if somebody has any insight, you know, let me know. Um, I, I just let it go, but I, I might try to uh, tune this thing and see if it, it's a little high, strong or something, and I can bring down the idle a little bit, but it, I mean, other than that, it runs great. Um, now, this little saw does have a tendency to throw the chain sometimes. Um, I don't know why, but several times throughout history, I've had this saw since 2003 or four, I think, right in that area. And several times throughout its history, it has thrown the chain. And um, I just, all I do is, I mean, I make sure that the bolts are down really tight. I mean, you gotta tighten them tight, and I know you can probably over tighten them because they'll rip out of the plastic and everything, and then you'll have a big problem. But, you know, I gotta get them as tight as possible um, and just try to make sure that the chain is, um, is snug, you know, I don't, you know, don't leave the don't cut with a loose chain and make sure that the bolts are tight and hold it. But yeah, this, this chainsaw, it runs a little bit high strung and it will throw the chain if you let it get loose and you really work it too hard. So that's the only issue I've had with it. Other than that, it gets, you know, it's a little workhorse, it gets, gets some work done. This is a maple log that I just pulled over from that big maple tree I used a floor jack on several weeks ago. And let me tell you, that tree is heavy. Um, I mean, it's amazing how heavy some of these trees are, and it varies widely. Um, those other trees that I was cutting a minute ago are like feather light. I mean, it looks like it's solid. I mean, it's really good wood. It is solid. There's nothing wrong with it, no bugs, nothing. But it's, I mean, I can just pick it right up and carry it around and no problem. That maple, I mean, I feel like each one of those rounds is like, I don't know, I mean, I want to say 200 pounds, but I mean, they're probably every bit of 90 or 100 a piece, which is like picking up a small person every time you pick up a round. But um, it is really heavy. That, that, uh, five foot section I just drug over. I don't even know if I could lift that. I mean, I can pick it up and drag it and move it around. And I was able to lift it. I was able to get it in my pickup truck and slide it in. But I mean, it's all I can do to lift it. It is, it is really heavy and it's also not splitting well. I mean, I did a little bit of splitting on it uh, when I was cutting that tree up and it was not coming apart. I mean, it's just, the mall is just bouncing off of that stuff. So. That's going to be the next video I do, is uh, processing these rounds, um, uh, splitting them. And I'm probably going to have to use a maul because they're just so heavy and that five ton log splitter probably won't split them. So you're going to be able to enjoy me trying to split them or figure out how to. I mean, I may have to chip away at them with a, with a maul and then put them on a log splitter and finish them or something. I don't know, but 
they are not splitting easy. And I mean, I don't, I don't know what you think about maple and it comes in all different shapes and sizes, but this is a really old tree and it is solid. I mean, it's so heavy and it's not, it's not one to work with me. I was watching uh, some other videos and it's deceiving. Some of these sections you think might weigh a thousand pounds or two thousand pounds. Uh, some of these guys are able to weigh this stuff and sections of these old maple trees and stuff, you know, these 200 year old trees weigh six, seven thousand pounds, almost eight thousand pounds, like just a, a, a section of the trunk, not the whole tree, but I mean, just like, you know, just a, like a 10 foot large section or like a, a, a tree top with part of the trunk or something, you're talking six or seven thousand pounds. So um, that section that I cut up was, that's what it was. I mean, it was a large trunk section. You can see the rounds sitting on the left side of the screen. And that'll be coming right up uh, when I get some free time uh, splitting those. I'll have to wrestle them around and try to get them split up and uh, dry them so they can be ready to burn next year. Yeah, looking back, that saw is really smoking bad. I must have got some bad oil, and um, that's a shame because I was waiting for a week or so until it was convenient for me to get oil, and I finally got it, and I think it's bad oil, and I probably need to just go ahead and dispose of it and buy more oil, different, a different brand. Um, that's got to be why it's smoking. It's just not burning clean and it's not providing good lubrication. So I am aware of that and depending upon um, 
how much cutting I have coming up, I may just have to go ahead and do that. I mean, I may just have to go ahead and spend another few dollars and buy fresh oil.
The little home light getting the job done. Look at the size of that noodle it made. It ripped that maple log right in half, no problem. And uh, here's a look at the carnage that it just made. A little noodle salad for you. Look at that. That's just impressive, even with a dull chain. I haven't sharpened that chain in a long time. So I was pretty happy with that. I've been thinking lately about how blessed I am to have this variety of wood right now. I have hickory, I have white oak, I have cherry. I can use this stuff in my smoker. I want to make a spatula for my cast iron out of it. I'm even thinking about making an Osage orange spatula um, if I ever get around to it. I'd like to make uh, at least two of them so I can have like a little stir set with them. But, um, a lot of the people on the West Coast and stuff, they don't have access to hickory, and especially people in big cities. Uh, if they like barbecuing and pizza ovens and smokers, they just don't have access to wood. I mean, uh, a lot of people just don't. So, I mean, I've been thinking about selling this stuff. There's a lot of people doing it already, so, I mean, that's why I haven't done it. But if anybody wanted some, I mean... I'd be willing to fill up a flat rate box and and ship it for the right price. Um, but I'm just, you know, happy as a pig in mud that I have all, I have all of this wood to burn and I can put it in my smoker or whatever. Um, I'm going to try to save some of that hickory and set it aside just for that. But, yeah, um, it's some good looking stuff and I'm pretty happy with my pile of wood this year. Really blessed with what uh, the nature and the Lord and the community has provided. So that's a big, uh, big high point for me right now. It's a big positive thing. I've enjoyed getting all this and I'm gonna let the hunt continue throughout the year. However, you know, during the summer, it's a lot more difficult. Like I said, the leaves are all on the trees, the poison ivy's out. It's just, you know, it's sweltering hot. But who knows, there might come a time when I stumble upon something, so we'll just see. I'm always on the lookout for stuff, so we'll see what happens. Alrighty, now this is a big chunk of weeping willow that I found in my storm damage video. If you go back and watch it, I mean, you can see, and that tree is still laying there. Um, they have not touched it. This is the kind of stuff 
that I just kind of, I almost want to just go and knock on their door and be like, hey, uh, <laughs> do you need some help getting your uh, tree cleaned up? Um, but anyways, I just had to have this for my collection as well. I know uh, Weeping Willow is not the best firewood in the world, but it, I mean, I just can't resist and it will burn. So this is a nice big round that I'm splitting here and um, it ends up being really pretty inside. It's got some uh, twisted grain or uh, it's kind of wavy. I don't know what you would call it. You sawmill guys have a term for it, I'm sure. But it has just a really unique grain structure to it and it's some pretty wood inside. Um, but it'll burn just great in my fireplace. So um, I have that just to throw in my fireplace next year. Okay guys, if you just heard that loud bang, that was my cat knocking over a guitar case. So I had to stop and go put her in a bathroom because she is going crazy right now. She just knocked over my CD case and I put it back and then she went and knocked it over again and then I put the CD case away in, in a room and she ran over and got on top of my guitar case and knocked it over. I, sometimes it's just too much. She gets so wound up. And anyways, that's that piece of willow I was trying to show you. And if you were watching that, it's some really pretty stuff. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with this cat, man. She's got her own YouTube channel, and it's really funny to watch her sometimes. And if I could record everything that she has done, it's just comedy gold. But she's an elusive thing with the camera, and, like, she does things just spur of the moment, and I can't always have the camera on. So, you know, I miss 90% of the stuff that she does. But um, she's going to be... A handful to live with for the next 15 or 20 years yeah, it's sometimes it's it's a little bit concerning but anyways um, back to the willow <laughs> all right so I have noticed that I think I swing an axe uh, what would be considered left-handed and that's what was going on right there I tried to put my right hand on on top um, when I swing an axe my right hand is at the bottom of the handle and my left hand is, is on top and I just feel really comfortable like using my right hand to get the head of the axe like swinging out and, and using my right hand to bring the whole thing around from the bottom. That's just the way I do it. Um, now I, I do watch um, pretty much everybody else's content on YouTube and I, I tried to subscribe to a lot of you guys so um, I'm there watching and I appreciate anybody that's watching me but I noticed that everybody else pretty much swings using their right hand on top of the axe and I guess you can use that as a lever or in a guide to to exert downward force um, but if you watch I was just laughing I mean I felt like a totally uncoordinated person um, swinging the axe I can't even do it if I mean I can try again maybe I'll try some more but um, I just switched my grip to the other way around with my right hand on top and I couldn't even do it I mean I felt like I had no coordination at all I couldn't even swing it so that there's that um, apparently I swing an axe left-handed but I, I feel like I'm pretty strong that way and I get a lot of power so that's the way I do it that's going to about conclude today's video, guys. Anybody who made it this far, thanks for watching. That was another pretty long video. Uh, here's just kind of a picture of what I have left as far as the large rounds to split. Now, there is about maybe two-thirds of a face cord to the right of the camera that's all maple that also has to be split. It's some smaller rounds. It's all in the, you know, four to six to eight inch uh, range. It'll be easy splitting. But that'll be coming up, and... Uh, you know, that'll be about it for the firewood processing.